one of the features of impact investing that has been very rewarding to me is to see how people come together around impact investing. Uh, folks from various political backgrounds, from very conservative, uh, as well as um, um, rather uh, from the left side of the political spectrum, uh, can agree that that there are opportunities uh, for us to align our values with our investing. And um, there, are, there is such a, a range of opportunities uh, for us to engage in this that uh, we found that um, uh, people are frustrated at the inability of government to solve some of the basic problems facing our country and our planet. And um, there is a lot of cynicism that government over the, over the medium term will be able to uh, be able to put in place the policy solutions or that it might ever be able to create these solutions. And impact investing uh, provides an opportunity for individuals, for uh, institutions, for corporations to uh, see the alignment of their own longer term interests um, with um, uh, with sustainable profit as well. I've seen a growing number of, of individuals um, from various backgrounds coming together around impact investing. Uh, and yet there is still the general perception that uh, in order to do good, we have to uh, forego either profits or uh, rigor or the um, fundamental acumen that business people bring to a situation. And um, in the case of impact investing, it gives folks a chance to use their business brains and apply it to very difficult problems in a way that gets beyond traditional solutions. Uh, there is a very strong role for government and there's a strong role for government to partner with private individuals. Um, but we shouldn't wait around for government to act. We should uh, move forward and come together as a community to make this happen. The issue of how policy can support uh, social and environmentally oriented impact investing is one that is coming, uh, becoming much more prominent. Uh, the San Francisco Federal Reserve Bank uh, convenes groups frequently and is a, is a very positive, it's a very strong conduit of giving feedback to government policymakers. Um, well, government policy has been very important in, in catalyzing certain elements of clean tech and community investing. There is a range of investment that can take place quite profitably, earning market returns that doesn't need any government subsidy or uh, or at least positive support. Uh, certainly, we don't want the government to interfere and, and create uh, an unlevel playing field against the sector, but there are, there are many ways that, the, that uh, there are many opportunities for um, solid investments to be made without additional subsidies being channeled. McKinsey, uh, the consulting firm, published a, uh, a seminal study several years ago is recently updated around the uh, greenhouse gas cost abatement curve that shows a range of, for example, it shows a range of interventions to reduce the emission of greenhouse gases into the environment. And a good chunk of that, I would say about a third of those, actually make money while you're reducing greenhouse gas emissions, reducing carbon emissions. It doesn't require any government intervention. Of course, having uh, a carbon tax would help tremendously. Taxing bad things versus good things is always a sensible way to go. So if there's a way that we could make the playing field more even, reduce subsidies uh, to uh, things that are actually doing harm, and uh, reduce taxes on things that are doing good, 
um, and perhaps even adding a carbon tax, I think we would see a dramatically different world uh, as a result. And we'd be better off. Thank you.